Oh, it's time to play the team that sits at the bottom at the moment, and that is Sheffield United. And you might be thinking it's going to be an easy game, a walk in the park. But I tell you what, there is no easy games in Premier League. Every team is difficult, and almost every team has incredible managers. And now Sheffield has brought back their previous manager, Chris Wilder. And they had the manager bounce now in the previous game at home against Brentford where they won 1-0. So the confidence and belief is back in that team. They kept a clean sheet. He managed to make it really difficult for Brentford. And he's gonna do it the same here for us because now it's away game at Chelsea for them. And by just... Being compact, sitting in front of the box, waiting for mistakes, playing on set pieces and counters to get you really far, especially against a, a confidence that has been shattered in Chelsea. And we are struck by more injuries, especially on Reese James, our captain now. So he's out too. So Chris Wilder is really clapping his hand together and has confidence into the Chelsea game because why wouldn't he? I mean, we are abysmal at this moment in time uh, so we can expect them coming we're playing five at the back being compact being very difficult to break so instead of focusing which opposition we are facing unless we're going to find their weaknesses we have to have in our uh, like mind that every team is difficult in this league there is no easy games we have to go out there have a belief every game it doesn't matter if it's Sheffield or Manchester City or if it's a London Derby we have to always have the belief Pochettino has to get that into the players. And I think he could maybe have the capacity to do so because I listen to his press conference and I usually don't take them too serious, but I thought he said some brilliant stuff and he explained that he knew what he was getting himself into, that this project would be very, very difficult and the pressure is always on from the Chelsea fans. Uh, if you are the manager, if you are the players, you will feel the pressure. But he said that he is so experienced now and instead of feeling guilty or feeling sorry, he is very positive on trying to find new solutions, new ways. And uh, he told his staff that we have to elevate ourselves. We have to improve. Uh, we can never give up. And I really liked what I heard about Pochettino saying that, that he's not going to give up. And he's going to find solutions. So we will see what he is going to do in these coming games then. And maybe we should allow him to give a few more games actually. To see if he can turn it around. Uh, because I have a slight belief he might actually do so. And um, he also explained that the team have got together 18 there with the staff and so on. There was kind of a bonding session. And uh, the players then went out to eat dinner. It was three teams that came with that idea and so And He thought that it's good because some of these players barely speak to each other. And uh, it's very, I mean, maybe we have players that is in a secondary group or isn't part of any group in this team. And it can be nice that, that we're going out, eating dinner, bonding together and, and get to know each other more and communicating with each other. And that might actually help now. It's up to see now in the game if the players is uh, ha showing some more fighting spirit now. Uh, it's easy to talk, it's easy to do stuff before, but when it comes to the games, it's, it's there you're gonna show it. So we have to wait and see what's gonna happen uh, there then. On to the team news, and he mentioned that Sanchez might be out for a couple of weeks due to knee problems, I think. Uh, Cucurella will be sidelined as well since he has an ankle problem. Uh, Reese James, we know, has the hamstring injury and will be out for three to four months, and that can have an effect on the school. But here's where Pochettino has to help them guide them through this with your experience and knowledge. Bunko should be back. Uh, he should be back in the squad, he mentioned, Lavia, uh, Gusto should be back as well, are they ready to start, maybe not, maybe they can come in in the second half uh, for like maybe 20 to 10 minutes, it depends, I think Gusto should be able to play at least 30 minutes or something, with Nkunka Lavia I'm not sure, 
So we ease them back progressively. We're not going to start them immediately. We help them getting in, getting the match fitness, match sharpness back, getting the feel for the game again. And then they should be able to start in no time. Now you know me that I'm stressing a lot that I want to see natural fullbacks because I think that will help our wingers massively with the support in the attack. But we have to do things maybe a bit different now. We don't have any right back that can start. Gusto as I said can come in to the second half if things going bad. But this is what I would do. So Petrovic comes in to goal because Sanchez is out and uh, this is a perfect opportunity now for Petrovic to show himself now we can't be too hard on him this guy hasn't started a match for a very long time but Pochettino mentioning has been training good so we have to allow this guy to get a couple of games in and uh, to get the match sharpness back and get a feel and chemistry for the squad in the back line now I know we heard that Thiago Silva is going to probably retire. We are not looking to retain him. But we, we need leadership. We need experience and know-how. to Guide the team through different situations for the moment. And, and I'm, I'm actually I'm on board on not playing Silva every game now. I would like to build maybe a strong centre-back partnership with the Sassi Cole, with the Sassi Chile. Uh, because they're going to be here. That would be uh, a solution. But the thing is that we got no right backs. That is ready to start. So I'm going to play this Sassi as a right back. Silva and Colwill as centre back partnership. And when we're going to attack. We having three centre backs. This Sassi will be a bit more defensively. Uh, but if, if we're going to go down and it doesn't work. Then bring on Malagusto. In the second half. And Matsen Will be my left back option. And I will focus my most of my attacks. On the left hand side. Where Matsen can provide. That with Those overlapping runs. I think it's time we're giving him a chance now. And see what he can do. He might get sold in January. We know that. But we aren't in January yet. It's still two weeks till that. So maybe he can actually prove something if he's giving the opportunity I mean who else are we gonna play there? I don't wanna see Colwell as a left back that is not the solution whatsoever and in the midfield I will continue with the Caicedo Enzo partnership allowing them to have the ball allowing Enzo to, to be in the middle and support in attacks not I don't wanna have him out wide because that's just going to get into Madsen's paths. Uh, so Madsen, Caicedo in the middle, in the pivot. And in the number 10 role, I will go with Gallagher. But the thing I want to see with Gallagher now is I want to see more. When he got the ball, he has to try and make runs inside the box. Uh, he has to try and make forward passes, not only sideways. And... I don't want Gallagher to have the ball too much, to be honest. I want Silva, Colville, Enzo and Caicedo to have the ball. Uh, and I want Gallagher to be more attacking inside the box instead. Like a second uh, striker, more like a shadow striker. To make late runs inside the box. Uh, so he can occupy maybe some center backs. Because that will make it easier for Enzo and Caicedo to find space uh, with their passes and uh, to exploit spaces. And on the wings, we know Mudrik. I think Mudrik was out. I think he mentioned that. So therefore, having Sterling on the left hand side, Old Palmer on the right hand side. And if Sterling is playing as an inverted winger on the left hand side, that means he will be even more dangerous if Martin is providing with that width. With those overlaps, please allow someone like Massen to be very offensive in this game. Uh, please, Pochettino. We have to try at least. We have to try. <laughs> I, I know we have some youngsters training in the squad. And that's excellent in case someone doesn't perform. If Massen is very bad being on a, a youngster like uh, 
Boniface, I think his name, if he has trained with the team, he can play there. Don't, I will continue with Armando Broja. I know he didn't have uh, the best game, but this guy hasn't started games for months, for maybe a year. So I want to give you Broja that opportunity. I want players to be closer to him and I want him to just more focus on being a threat inside the box. If you're getting the ball Broja, just hold it up. And then pass it immediately. Don't try to overcomplicate stuff now. When you're just coming back. Uh, I want to Broja to start. To get a run of games. Because he's a natural striker compared to Jackson. And if Broja start banging in goals. We might not have to go for a striker. In January. January that we have desperately uh, mentioned. So. I know Broja is, is not going to be perfect, but I want to give him a run of games up front. And just focusing on attacking the box, making runs, do the simple stuff. And Enzo will find you. If Martin is making overlapping runs, he will find you with low driven crosses. So here is what it would look like when we are attacking, in my opinion. So as you can see, the Sassi will be slightly more inverted as a centre back. But he can also make like shadow runs or what you're gonna say. He can make like in he can like make a late man runs inside the box when no one expected because he's physical dominant in there. We can use him use his strength to that. So let's say we're focusing the play on the left hand side, ends of finding a Martin overlapping, then he's putting in a cross where Broja, Gallagher, Palmer, and the Sassi is attacking. Uh, can see the Fernandes lurking outside, Sterling as well, maybe he's attacking the box too, I don't know. Uh, but he, I would like Sterling to stay outside the box in case Martin overlaps, because then he can either put in a low driven cross or find Sterling outside who can cut inside and shoot. Uh, so that's the opportunities uh, I see with this lineup that we can use. And uh, let me know what uh, you would change there guys. In terms of the season so far, our XG is one of the highest in the league, but we can't be clinical in front of goal. But if Pochettino simplify the game a bit, allowing players to play in 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 positions that fits them, unless, except disaster because we don't have an option at the moment unless Gusto is coming in, uh, putting in uh, low dreaming crosses, high crosses where we have many players attacking the box. Also, having a Sterling uh, cutting inside, aiming at the far corners. Palmer took a lot of shots outside the box the last game too, where he was close to get a goal. Continue with that, spam with crosses, shots, be brave, having a uh, place going forward. Let Enzo Caicedo be in the middle and they will definitely uh, make difference with their passes, vision and their intelligence up there. So, uh, this is what I would do. Uh, in terms of my score prediction, I think we can. It's going to be really tough against Chris Wilder. Like my heart says, we're gonna win one 0 but my brain tells me it's gonna end in a one-one draw, and we will go there being disappointed yet again. But uh, if Pochettino doing something new now. Um, finding other solutions, giving some other guys um, the chance, I think we're going to get the 1-0 victory. Uh, so let me know your score prediction in the comments down below. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to my page, hit that notification bell down below so you never miss when I upload my socials in the description too. And uh, it's time now. It's time. Chelsea getting those three points against Sheffield because that will help us building confidence. Next.